Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Neil Before Pod interview segment. I'm Craig, and I recently attended Edinburgh Comic Con, where I was lucky enough to speak to Star Trek Enterprise star Dominic Keating. He played weapons officer Lieutenant Malcolm Reed on the show, so I focused my question on getting a few anecdotes about his experience as part of the cast, as well as anything he has planned in the future. Just a brief warning that I was in the middle of the Comic-Con atmosphere when speaking to Dominic, which means there's quite a bit of background noise that I couldn't get rid of, including a lot of chatter and a song playing rather loudly in the background. Focus on our voices and you should hopefully avoid headaches. I'm delighted to be joined on the Open Four Pod with Dominic Keating. Hi, welcome. Hi there, buddy. So, how are you doing? How are you enjoying Edinburgh? Very good indeed. It's, uh, it's been 30 years since I was here, so it's lovely to come back. Yeah, I did a play with Tim Spall here uh, in about... I think 88 or something like that, um, called Screamers at the Playhouse, and um, yeah, time of my life then, and it's been it's been all those years since I've been back, so it's great to be back wow, in town. it's a long time, long time to be away. So. And the sun came out today. It did, it did, it's warmer than it has been pretty much any other time. Uh, so, what have you been doing other than being at Comic-Con, obviously, how's the Comic-Con atmosphere been? I came over to do a film in London, actually, which I just finished shooting, called Amsterdam Secrets, and... Uh, which finished shooting about uh, five days ago. And uh, it happened to coincide with a couple of gigs here for the Trek world here in Edinburgh, and then one next weekend in Scarborough I'm going to go down to. Nice. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so, a bit about yourself. Neil Before Blog is very much a kind of film and TV focused website. Uh, that's what we write about a lot. So, what, what do you watch when you have time? Uh, what films are you looking forward to? What have you seen recently? I, uh, as a BAFTA member of the British Academy, I do <laughs> see all the movies. They send me the screeners, and I, and I attend a lot of the screenings in New York, um, in LA, where I live. Uh, so, I've seen all of those films this year. I particularly loved I, Tonya this year, that was, good, yeah. was really well done, um, and I really like Phantom Thread, which apparently is going to be Daniel Day-Lewis's last movie. Sadly. So he says. Yeah. So he says. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? I, I did like The Shape of Water, and I thought uh, a lot of it was beautifully done. Um, and, uh, and then TV-wise, I just thought The Crown was exceptional work on behalf of Stephen Daldry and... Uh, Peter Morgan, um, really, I, I can't think I've seen anything better on TV in 25 years, so big fan of that. I've not seen that yet, but it is on my list. No, it's, um, the it's list that always gets longer. It's pretty good stuff. Cool. Oh. So, obviously, uh, most people will know you as uh, Lieutenant Malcolm Reed on Enterprise. Aye, aye. So, when you got uh, cast as that character, what was the kind of big attraction to that particular character? Uh, series regular, seven years. Yeah, well, really good money yeah. <laughs> oh and of course we were going to go into space fair enough I'm yeah. uh, just very happy to you know get a regular gig like that uh, I've been knocking around in Los Angeles for about six seven years and uh, you know I was getting some success and doing a couple of recurring roles on other shows and some guest stars and stuff but uh, this was definitely you know you knew you'd hit the gravy train on this one yeah um, and was it daunting appearing in such a well-known franchise, you know. Yeah, I was delighted. I mean, I had a certain trepidation. I was actually had the honour of doing the first shot of the seat of the first, you know, of the show. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, yeah, when I took that step up onto the bridge that first day, and okay, <laughs> beam me up, mate. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, your uh, Malcolm's friendship with Trip was one of the kind of more celebrated aspects of the show. Everyone loved it. Uh, was that planned from the beginning or was it just noticed that you and Connor Trenier were a bit of a just double act? Just noticed. Uh, we did a small scene together early on in season one. I can't, I can't even remember. I think it was in, in engineering and uh, Connor and I liked each other as actors, as, as people uh, yeah. uh, from the get-go. And um, yeah, they, you know, the prices on episodic shows like that are looking for chemistry and you know just what they can write for really stuff and, to play with stuff, later yeah, yeah and then what works what looks good and works on screen and uh, they noticed that there was a good chemistry between these two characters the sort of odd couple if you will yeah. 
and uh, and yeah, so it was it was at the end of season one that they gave us that lovely episode shuttle pod one to shoot, which was a treat, and uh, yeah, he's still at least one of my best friends today. So that's good. Yeah, I've, I've seen you at other Star Trek yeah. conventions and things, and you're always uh, you always bring a lot of a lot of entertainment to the panels that you Thank do. You. So um, so it's really good that that's kind of forged that. And um, okay. so a lot of people would say Enterprise ended before its time. I'd be one of them, yeah. So, if it did get later seasons, what would you have liked to see, both from Alcom and just for the show itself? Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, was, I was very happy with the way they fleshed Malcolm out, and uh, particularly at the end of the fourth season, you know, with that Section 31 stuff. Yeah. It was uh, pretty interesting, and his um, um, the, being torn between his loyalty to the captain and his Masonic Lodge leanings. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, you know, we, I, we certainly had a couple more years left in us, that's for sure. That yeah. was, it was a really sad day when uh, I got the phone call from Rick Berman saying that we were, we were no longer. Um, politics had to do with it. The network we were on was flailing and they just couldn't really find a place for us. And uh, it was a sad thing. Anyway, yeah. long time ago now. I mean, it's uh, it's 15 years since since we cancelled. Uh, 12. Uh, is it uh, off the air for 12, 12, 12, 13 years? 12, 13 years, yeah. years ago. Uh, is Discovery something that you've seen any of? I so haven't yet. No, I was I was meant to go to the premiere of that at, uh, uh, just in Hollywood there at the Cinerama Dome. Sadly, that very same day, I had to put one of my dear cats down who Cuts. had gotten super sick and... Yeah. He's an old fella, and it was uh, it was a tough day. So I I really was in pieces a bit, really, when I, I just couldn't face being on the red carpet and yeah. glad handing people and talking track at that time. So at some point I'll catch it. I might. Uh, I'm here in London for a little bit. Yeah. I can get to watch it on Netflix at friends' houses because <laughs> I don't have the CBS uh, streaming. Oh yes, that's right. Which, uh, they have to pay for it back in the states. Makes it makes it difficult. Big in the contention. US to get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, when it comes to uh, Malcolm, did um, was any of yourself put into the character? Uh, um, or time goes on, um, actors can bring things to their characters and things like that. Was there anything? I definitely to did put a lot of uh, myself in in, in uh, Malcolm, and I not done that before, as it were, playing parts that I've been offered, uh, and I I. I I figured pretty early on if I just play him as the three-line bio that they wrote about him, this was going to get fairly dull. Yeah. And um, so I started, you know, I, yeah, I started letting if Dominic thought it was funny, perhaps Malcolm did. Yeah. And uh, and it, it it made him, you know, dichotomous and uh, contradictory. Uh, I think the writers enjoyed writing for that uh, contradiction and and stepping outside of the box. So yeah, it was a. Um, there was a there was a lot of me as a young seventeen year old who was thinking about joining the army. I come from an army background, and mm-hmm. I, I I did harken back to that young man, seventeen eighteen, who you know was considering. I was a very keen cadet officer uh, in the uh, you know the, the junior services. Um, but yeah, no, I. Uh, yeah, I definitely let a lot of myself come through. Oh, and uh, Scott Bakula is well documented being a renowned prankster on sets. Uh, was there anything in particular you can think of that, that he did and anything you did to get him back as well? I don't remember Scott pulling any pranks on us. We got him good and proper. Um, <laughs> I guess it was at the beginning of it all. Uh, he'd gone to New York to do what's called the Upfronts, and he'd been on a chat show, uh, the Rosie O'Donnell show. She'd found a, an old commercial of his from the 80s. A lot of people maybe don't know this, but Scott comes out of musical theatre. Yeah. And he can sing and dance, and he did this pretty dreadful commercial for Canada Dry, and he was the Canada Dry man, sort of festooned in dance gear and a headband, and he was the Canada Dry man, Canada Dry, and it was pretty uh, <laughs> laughable stuff. So she showed that. Well, our producers got that tape. Uh, they got the video dude to put it all around the, the uh, uh, computer screens in the bridge, 
and they sent the PEA to get uh, Scott from his trailer. We'd all been given the props department. You can't buy Canada Dry bottles anymore, okay. and so they've made them. Uh, Anthony and Linda have done a little dance routine, and they went and got Scott from his trailer, and he walks onto the bridge all captain-like, and someone goes, Hit it! <laughs> and the Canada Dry Man came up on all the screens. <laughs> You've never seen a man go puce red, nor to fucking 60 in <laughs> two seconds flat. Yeah, we got him good. So it sounds like you, um, you're pretty, you, you came together as a cast really early. and Very nice had a cast. Lot of fun. Yeah, the read-through, you could tell. I'd done enough shows, as it were, to know that from the read-through there was a good chemistry. And um, no one was going to be tricky. Good. Yeah, that's all great. Uh, so is there anything coming up from yourself that we should keep an eye out for? Well, those two films I told you about, Maternal yep. Instincts and Amsterdam Secrets. Um... I've, I've recently recorded the Iliad, which I'm very proud of. I'm now the fourth actor in all of human history nice. to record that. Uh, it's on iTunes. It's getting five-star reviews okay. on uh, audible.com and elsewhere. So, um, new translation, beautiful translation by a lady called Professor Caroline Alexander. Uh, and, uh, and let's see what happens. I've got a big audition next week for a six-part series of Les Miserables. Nice. So, um, fingers crossed. So there's a lot, there's a lot coming up. That we you know, I'm, uh, I'm, still, I'm a jobbing actor, mate, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm still doing it 35 years on or something. Nice, nice. Okay. So, last question is something we always ask: If you could have any superpower, what would you have and why? Uh, I think I'd love to fly. Really, flying's a popular one. Yeah, it really would be. I, I look at birds flying around and thinking, you know. Wow, that must be pretty cool, just to launch off <laughs> and take to the air. So, yeah. Flying's a good that, one. That would be yeah. mine. Mine would be speed. I don't like heights. So, oh, indeed. Uh, and I'm always running around trying to find extra time to do things, so yeah, speed well, would that, help me. Flying would help me, I tell you. That's yeah. another, that would be another, especially living in L.A., if I could just go as the as the crow flies, man. Save your fortune. Oh, <laughs> time, money, gas. Yeah. Save the planet. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on Neil Before Pod. It's been great to speak to you. My pleasure, bud. Thank you very much. That was my interview with Star Trek Enterprise star Dominic Keating. I really enjoyed chatting to him, however briefly. And on behalf of Neil Before Blog and Neil Before Pod, I wish him all the best in the future. <laughs>